Right, thank you very much for having us uh, speak to you today. We're um, come to talk to you. I'm Roberta Fuller, I'm the General Manager for Anaesthetics, Critical Care and Theatres at the Royal Cornwall Hospital. And this is my colleague Deborah, who manages Women and Children's Services and Sexual Health. Um, we had an opportunity last month, uh, well September, to go to Helsinki for 48 hours with the um, European Hospital Federation study tour. Um, which I thoroughly recommend. It's not too expensive, it's 600 euros each. It was a 48 hours of lots of great information. We were hosted by the Association of Finnish Local Regional Authorities, um, which is pretty much their uh, um, Department of Health, by another name. Um, and we had great itinerary, which included an introduction to the Finnish social and health care system, um, a, a very interesting talk about the economy of well-being, which I'll uh, we'll talk about in a minute, um, various advantages in digital healthcare, particularly the uh, digi national digital health platform, uh, which is called Health Village. And we also went to Helsinki University Hospital's New Children's Hospital for a visit. So I'm going to talk mostly about the digital um, side of things, and Deborah's going to talk a bit about the children's hospital visit. So, next slide. So, um, this is us. There were 19 participants um, from the countries listed up there. And uh, it was a very um, interesting group of people and plenty of opportunity to network with other people in the group. Uh, we came across some um, colleagues from Zurich who are also building a children's hospital, so we're quite keen to keep in touch with them. So it was a, quite a good um, cultural experience as well as learning about health care. Next one, so why visit um, Finland and why visit Finland now? Well, Finland um, have got six months worth of chairman, uh, presidency of the Council of the EU. Um, and the main theme for the next uh, six months is the economy of well-being, which is the idea um, of uh, promoting a Europe-wide debate on the um, concept of universal well-being being good for all um, and helping the economy. So um, pretty similar to what um, Jacinda Ardern is talking about in New Zealand, uh, putting money into making people feel well in themselves across a broad spectrum. Um, Finland is a small and relatively isolated population, so a little bit about like the Southwest Peninsula, um, it's a good test bed for innovation. Um, they um, have been doing quite a lot of work on sequencing the human genome in Finland because they have a number of congenital illnesses that are quite specific to their population and they're a small population over a four, just about four million people. So um, we thought um, that was uh, one of the reasons why they're able to do quite a lot of work with data. The Finns are very engaged with digital solutions. You see it in everyday life. Uh, in our hotel, we had an iPad, which you pressed um, an icon, and out of one tap, you got various different types of juices, which was quite um, interesting, because I've never seen anything like that before. But um, as a population... Sorry, but the juices out of the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> the iPad was next to it. It took a bit of while to work out how the iPad was connected to the spout, but it was, it was interesting. Everybody else seemed quite okay with it. Um, so they, they, they are quite trusting authority in the Finns. Um, they've had a long history of um, having to really rely on themselves, uh, keeping the Russians at bay and then the Swedes as well. So. Um, they um, have got a national identity card. They are quite willing to give over their data to the national system. And um, they um, have therefore a very big national healthcare database, which um, they're adding to. When we were in the hospital in um, Helsinki, they were asking another campaign for another 500,000 children to be added to their, their genetic information. Um, and um, digital healthcare is already pretty cutting edge. Uh, they have a national electronic patient record. Um, it allows you to move seamlessly between the five big centres of, of population in Finland, the biggest obviously being um, Helsinki. I'm not going to talk too much because I think we're quite tight for time about the, uh, the way that the health service is set up in Finland, but they have a large public um, health service which is run by a fairly fragmented system of about 300 uh, municipalities which uh, support health, both health and care, social care. When I visited F Finland 15 years ago, as people who from Derriford may remember me doing that, um, they have 400 odd municipalities. They're trying to bring them together um, and they're trying to um, uh, uh, collaborate in a, in a much better way, particularly bringing health and social care together. Um, so change is coming, they're looking to merge into um, 18 different regions which will give them a bit more traction on, on what they're doing. 
but um, there's a large public sector um, health service, a very, very small private sector health service. Um, most people, 87% of people who are working are covered by an occupational health scheme and um, there are also a range of uh, NGOs and voluntary organisations. So that's how they are organised. Next slide. So um, aspects of Digital Finland, I've talked about the unique national ID number. Um, they have a, a national e-health and social care service um, uh, that everybody has a Keller card which they use to access their care. They have been developing their electronic database since the 1980s. So they, they have a huge and long-standing um, history of uh, giving up data. Um, prescriptions are electronic only across the whole country. 100% of patient records are now in electronic format. Um, and it's a very reliable and high quality data. So it's allowed them to move on to develop their health platform. Next slide. Um, I've talked a little bit about their work with the human genome, um, so I'm not going to dwell on that, so go to the next slide. So we went to see Digital Virtual Hospital and Health Village. Um, so uh, the virtual hospital covers all Finns regardless of where they live. Um, and the Health Village concept has been developed by HUS, uh, Helsinki University Serala, which is their um, biggest um, hospital and health system in, in Finland. A third of the population are based in the Helsinki area. There are 25,000 people working for the hospital um, and there are 23 different hospitals in that, that region. So they're a very big kind of single entity. Um, it's a scalable and engaging digital service platform um, which uh, is supporting operational change as well as um, using the data really well. They have, they told us about their national data lake, which is a term I hadn't come across before, um, but they are looking to provide services to the general public, um, patients as they are engaged in their clinical pathway, and also clinicians for research and learning purposes. Every patient has access to their own information by um, my path, uh, so uh, every one of us, if we were living as a citizen in Finland, could tap into exactly what's going on for ourselves on their national system. So moving on. So that just shows it schematically, um, and uh, these are some of the things that they are developing. So for the general public, um, they want to encourage peer support. Um, there are various presentations available uh, about the various services on offer. Uh, you can check your own symptoms, so um, help yourself with self-care. Um, for the digital um, pathway communication, um, bar symptom barometers, so that uh, patients can get <coughs> when they need to connect with their doctor next. Again, self-care, supporting people, coaching them through their illness, those kinds of things, as well as their MyPath customer account, which is that black line in the middle, and allowing people to consent for research. They're very keen on getting as many people into research programmes as possible. For professionals, um, they are already doing e-consultations because of the geography of the country. Um, various diagnosis tools, such as uh, we were talking about earlier. Um, treatment instructions in a digital format and um, lots of tools for researchers. But they have a lot of information to play with. Moving on. So their vision is to start implementing some of the, their digital health platform in other countries. Particularly interesting to us was their um, exploration into predictive medicine. So they were looking at using their large um, data analytic capacity to uh, work out, for example, if you're a type 1 diabetic, um, they were looking to work out what might your next steps be, both in terms of the treatment you needed to receive, but personally to you, how you may engage with the service going forward. What were the risks uh, for you compared with everybody else in Finland who has got similar illness of not engaging and what might health professionals need to do next to ensure that you, that you were um, continuing in a positive way down your treatment pathway. Um, and again, research, and there's their data lake at the bottom. So I'm going to hand over to Deborah now to talk about our visit to the new children's hospital. So um, managing women and children services at um, RCHT, this was a particular key one for me to go to to see. Um, the new children's hospital has been open for about a year now and um, a lot of the technology and the things that they've been working on in that year they've been in, embedding. 
So um, just to say quickly, this is the size of the hospital. The, the, the biggest thing for us was it was co-designed by children and their families. So um, I've got to say, listening to what we're talking about here today about digital and AI and what have you, how patients are involved in that and how they join in co-design um, is really important. And what we experienced from the children's hospital um, was quite remarkable actually because a lot of the pathways and a lot of things that they had there, um, families and children had been um, involved in, in developing and the digital services that they had and the rooms that they had, um, they were certainly, you could see that in, in the way that the, the hospital run. <clears throat> so um, the digital technology in action, it was, it, was, it was really interesting because it seemed really smooth. On, on the left there, this is just a visual thing that's in their waiting room. Um, and the children, in, while they're in the waiting room, can, can draw pictures, um, colour in fish, um, then give it to one of the staff there, who then puts it on um, the display so they can go down and see their own ship, ship uh, um, their own fish going round in circles and, and just in write messages as and well. write messages yeah. yeah and it just engages them in in the fact that this is is not a, a frightening place to be that it's something that they're they're um enjoying um the other thing that they've got is that they they digitally sign in so they they're very very um uh i'm just trying to think of the words but the 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 children and the families and the people in finland um are, are really really engaged in technology so th so for them it, it, it is part of their normal life and we've got um a number of people who they're not as um, knowledgeable and everyone's got a smartphone now or, or near enough but um the way that they take it is just normal in the process so this was um the um check-in kiosk um the children go in they put the um when they first arrive they put their um uh, hospital details on it, it scans it and it gives them an, an avatar so those that child can then pick um, a design or a character that they want and that will then guide them through the whole process of that visit for that day which which was really really key for us to, to see children <coughs> who were looking um, for where to go and were following signs based on on the information that they'd got like the little yellow bird in the waiting room yeah, yeah. and um, and then for in, and that was on an outpatient basis so they would sit in a waiting room and then wait for the avatars to come up and it would tell them where to go um, and then they would follow that so the, the children helped de design that and, and and I've got to say when we're looking at our our own strategy for children's services at, um, at, at um, Trillis. Similar sort of things is what we want to look at for how we, we go forward. Um, just, if we just go back one, one second. The other, the other part of it is that for um, inpatients, the children have a tablet. So when they arrive, they are um, given a tablet um, and then they can interact with the staff. So they can do simple things like turn the lights on and off or turn the television over or request what they want for dinner but then they can also have interaction the family can um, with nursing staff with clinicians and and the um, uh, clinical care is is monitored on there so they can see what's happening to them and be part of of that and there can be that communication if they want to ask a question they can ask a question um, as well as using it for um, familiar games or it's just about making the child feel that they're safe um, and actually involved in the whole um, uh, pathway and experience. Um, so when we look at the, the digital platform benefits, it, the, the benefits were really evident when we were going <coughs> for, for both patients and family. Um, for staff, so the information and um, bedside monitoring, um, uh, it, it meant that they had a, a, an ability to be able to manage their workload um, easily because everything was there at a glance for them, them to see. Um, they're, they're still on a continuous improvement process. Um, however, um, the number of the things that they've done in the hospital are automated. Um, we were quite impressed by some of the things around ordering and procurement. Um, but it's clear that if we're going to do, and we're going to do similar with, with the new building in um, Trellis for Women and Children's Hospital, um, we look to design the hospital around what the future needs are 
for the patients and not around what we've got now. So what, what they were saying was it, it's not about looking what we've got now and how do we fit what we've got into a new hospital. It was about looking where do we want to be and how do we want it to look and um, what do we need to be more efficient about. And then that's how they looked to design that hospital. And it was really <coughs> evident going around there um, that they'd been successful in a number of um, Ways. And they did talk quite candidly about when they were designing the hospital, how the staff from the previous hospital wanted it designed for them. So the consultants all wanted an office, but they've gone away from that. And they, 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 they've given them open plan with telephone booths if they want to make a call. And they've got sensors to check people are actually using the open plan or not. So when you walk into the building, you can see a map of the open plan area. And you can click on, a, uh, you click on it and you can see whether there's a space for you to go and work because they've worked out that the clinicians are only really spending about one day a week maximum sat at a desk. The rest of the time they were with patients, so they've maximised the use of space. The other thing to say about the digital platform, which I <coughs> should have said, was um, they have made huge cost savings in the first five years in secondary care. They have estimated they've saved around 1.3 billion euros in the first five years from changing the way um, that people use their secondary care system and not going into hospital for so many outpatients, doing lots of remote consultations, uh, patients um, getting together in groups to manage their own long-term conditions. Um, so that, that it's been a real tangible cost saver as well as uh, something that's allowed people to move around the country. And I'll final, if you just nip back, <coughs> there are just some nice pictures here of um, the artwork that was in the hospital. Um, they got the um, permission from Toby Anson's family to use all of the pictures from the Moomin stories to theme the whole hospital with Moomin um, artwork on the walls, on the floors, on the ceilings um, that made it a really nice environment and it was quite mm. a simple thing wasn't it? It was very good. Yeah. Any questions for us? I think I was um, as a paediatrician it was really interesting to hear and um, the iPad if you think about it and all the descriptions that's empowered the, the children to take control and responsibility rather than be passively uh, led around. Uh, the other advantage I see of that is I, I know of a hospital in South India that, where more than 10 years ago they had iPads uh, that were attributed to the bed and the patients again were given them. And we all went, oh, aren't they going to steal them? But they don't. And so when you came as a clinician to see your patient, uh, you, the other thing you were able to do was you were able to access the patient's results and scans and see them at the bedside, which again changes that interaction uh, on how you work uh, in terms of the come along, go away, look at this. Uh, and of course, when I was hearing about that, we, was, uh, we were still in the half uh, digital radiology and of course we were still looking at scans and, and running around in departments. The, the child them. had their entire pathway on the iPad, yeah. so it had their drug so, regime, what they had to do next, uh, when they had to take a pill, um, so, all of that. So I think it's a great challenge to put in your head in terms of your thinking about uh, what the future may be. So. Any questions before lunch? You might get very few questions because lunch is going to be quite cool, <laughs> far away. Thanks, Deborah. That's really fascinating. Just maybe think about a couple of things. One was this has been really brilliant to see children involved in the children's facilities, but it's made me think about actually how young people involved in all our planning because mm. they're the you know, children of <coughs> the future. So that is our digital thinking. I think that's probably something we need to pay more attention to. Um, the other point of the question was, does this system, that hospital, is it part of an integrated community? And does this pick up the community parts of the children's pathway? Yeah, it's the, entire, it's the entire patient record is digital in Finland. So it doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter what age you are, you are connected in. Um, so it's got primary care and secondary care. And the key about it is, and we know that, um, so for paediatrics, one of our challenges is, is our, our weights and our links with our tertiary centres. So um, how we have our patients who are in um, Cornwall and, and, and then how we can get them seen by uh, specialists in, say, Bristol. And, and what they had there was that those things are done remotely. A lot of those things are done remotely. A lot of the children um, live quite a way away from, from the, um, the hospitals. And so a lot is done um, with um, remote appointments, um, direct care through um, technology to specialist nurses. And then when they do come to the acute trust, 
they absolutely need to be there. So that, that and the links with the GPs then, um, they can see at a glance straight away exactly what's happening to um, their patients in secondary care. And it's really useful for remote learning as well because um, the Finns have got quite a few rare cancers, um, genetic illnesses, particularly strabismus, but um, some of the kidney disease they experience um, and sometimes uh, somebody right in the north in Oulu won't uh, know what the cancer is, but we'll be able to connect in really simply, maybe with an expert in Tampere or Turku or Helsinki or one of the other big centres. So it's it's absolutely interconnected. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, just to clarify that one, is it the fact that the data layer that they're all plugging into is across the board, or is it that there's a mandated front-end user system that everyone has to use, or is it... No, it's, it's having the mm. national data set because um, Helsinki <coughs> University Hospital are looking at the moment to purchase Epic. So they've, they've dabbled in some of the other systems. They've got our RFDI for equipment. They've struggled a bit with RFDI for staff, but they've got it for equipment. Um, and and they are looking at Epic as a bespoke electronic patient record, but they already have <coughs> um, an electronic patient record that's a little bit clunky and different systems around the country so that's harm harmonizing that is the next step really